Charles Allen Murray is an American paleoconservative and paleolibertarian leaning political scientist, author, columnist, and pundit. He first became well known for his Losing Ground, American Social Policy 1950 Euro 1980 and 1984, which discussed the American welfare system. He is best known for his controversial book The Bell Curve, co authored with Richard Herrenstein in 1994 which argues that class and race are linked with intelligence. Murray has also written in Pursuit, of Happiness and Good Government, What It Means to Be a Libertarian, A Personal Interpretation, Human Accomplishment, The Pursuit of Excellence in the Arts and Sciences, 800 BC to 1950, and In Our Hands, A Plan to Replace the Welfare State. He published Real Education, Four Simple Truths for Bringing America's Schools Back to Reality in 2008. Murray's articles have appeared in Commentary Magazine, The New Criterion, The Weekly Standard, The Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, and The New York Times. Currently working as a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, a conservative think tank in Washington, D.C. Biography, Early Life and Education, Murray was raised in Newton, Iowa in a Republican, non-collegiate Norman Rockwell kind of family that stressed moral responsibility. He is the son of Francis B. and Alan B. Murray, a Maitland Company executive. He had an intellectual youth marked by a rebellious and prankster sensibility. As a teen he played pool at a hangout for juvenile delinquents, studied debate, espoused labor unionism, and on one occasion burned a cross next to a police station. Murray credits the SAT with helping him get out of Newton and into Harvard. Back in 1961, the test helped get me into Harvard from a small Iowa town by giving me a way to show that I could compete with applicants from Exeter and Andover, wrote Murray. Ever since, I have seen the SAT as the friend of the little guy, just as James Bryant Conant, president of Harvard, said it would be when he urged the SAT upon the nation in the 1940s. However, in an editorial published in the New York Times on March 8, 2012, Murray suggested removing the SAT's role in college admissions, noting that the SAT has become a symbol of new upper-class privilege, as people assume that high scores are purchased through the resources of private schools and expensive test preparation programs. Murray obtained a BA in history from Harvard in 1965 and a PhD in political science from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1974. Peace Corps service in Thailand Murray left for the Peace Corps in Thailand in 1965, staying abroad for a formative six years. At the beginning of this period, the young Murray kindled a romance with his Thai Buddhist language instructor, Sashap Dejupam, the daughter of a wealthy Thai businessman, who was born with one hand and a mind sharp enough to outscore the rest of the country on the college entrance exam. Murray subsequently proposed by mail from Thailand, and their marriage began the following year a move that Murray now considers youthful rebellion. I'm getting married to a one-handed Thai Buddhist, he said. This was not the daughter-in-law that would have normally presented itself to an Iowa couple. Murray credits his time in the Peace Corps in Thailand with his lifelong interest in Asia. There are aspects of Asian culture as it is lived that I still prefer to Western culture, 30 years after I last lived in Thailand, says Murray. Two of my children are half Asian. Apart from those personal aspects, I have always thought that the Chinese and Japanese civilizations had elements that represented the apex of human accomplishment in certain domains. Recalling his time in Thailand in a 2014 episode of Conversations with Bill Crystal, Murray noted that his worldview was fundamentally shaped by his time there. Essentially, most of what you read in my books I learned in Thai villages. He went on. I suddenly was struck first by the enormous discrepancy between what Bangkok thought was important to the villagers and what the villagers wanted out of government. And the second thing I got out of it was that when the government change agent showed up, the village went to hell in terms of its internal governance. Murray's work in the Peace Corps and subsequent social research in Thailand for research firms associated with the U.S. government led to the subject of his statistical doctoral thesis in political science at MIT in which he argued against bureaucratic intervention in the lives of the Thai villagers. Divorce and remarriage By the 1980s, his marriage to Sashap Dejupam had been unhappy for years, 
but his childhood lessons on the importance of responsibility brought him slowly to the idea that divorce was an honorable alternative, especially with young children involved. Murray divorced Dej Upham after 14 years of marriage and three years later married Catherine B. Cox, an English literature instructor at Rutgers University. Cox was initially dubious when she saw his conservative reading choices, and she spent long hours trying to reconcile his shocking views with what she saw as his deep decency. In 1989, Murray and Cox co-authored a book on the Apollo program, Apollo, Race to the Moon. Murray attends and Cox is a member of a Quaker meeting in Virginia, and they live in Frederick County, Maryland near Washington, D.C. Murray has four children, two by each wife, and remains close with both families. Research Murray began research work at the American Institutes for Research, one of the largest of the private social science research organizations, upon his return to the U.S. From 1974 a year 1981, Murray worked for the AIR eventually becoming chief political scientist. While at AIR, Murray supervised evaluations in the fields of urban education, welfare services, daycare, adolescent pregnancy, services for the elderly, and criminal justice. From 1981 to Euro 1990, he was a fellow with the conservative Manhattan Institute where he wrote Losing Ground, which heavily influenced the welfare reform debate in 1996, and in pursuit. He has been a fellow of the American Enterprise Institute since 1990 and was a frequent contributor to the Public Interest, a journal of conservative politics and culture. In March 2009, he received AEI's highest honor, the Irving Crystal Award. He has also received a doctorate honoris causa from Unoversighted Francisco Maracuen. Murray has received grants from the conservative Bradley Foundation to support his scholarship, including the writing of The Bell Curve. Murray's Law Murray's Law is a set of conclusions derived by Charles Murray in his book Losing Ground, American Social Policy, 1950 Euro 1980. Essentially, it states that all social welfare programs are doomed to affect a net harm on society, and actually hurt the very people those programs are trying to help. In the end, he concludes that all social welfare programs cannot be successful and should ultimately be eliminated altogether. Murray's Law 1. The Law of Imperfect Selection Any objective rule that defines eligibility for a social transfer program will irrationally exclude some persons. Two. The law of unintended rewards, any social transfer increases the net value of being in the condition that prompted the transfer. 3. The law of net harm, the less likely it is that the unwanted behavior will change voluntarily, the more likely it is that a program to induce change will cause net harm. The bell curve, the bell curve, intelligence and class structure in American life is a controversial, best-selling 1994 book that Charles Murray wrote with the Harvard professor Richard J. Herrenstein. Its central point is that intelligence is a better predictor of many factors including financial income, job performance, unwed pregnancy, and crime than one's parents' socioeconomic status or education level. Also, the book argued that those with high intelligence are becoming separated from the general population of those with average and below average intelligence, and that this was a dangerous social trend. Murray expanded on this theme in his 2012 book Coming Apart. Much of the controversy erupted from chapters 13 and 14, where the authors write about the enduring differences in race and intelligence and discuss implications of that difference. While the authors were reported throughout the popular press as arguing that these IQ differences are genetic, they write in the introduction to Chapter 13 that the debate about whether and how much genes and environment have to do with ethnic differences remains unresolved, and it seems highly likely to us that both genes and the environment have something to do with racial differences. The book's title comes from the bell-shaped normal distribution of IQ scores. The normal distribution is the limiting distribution of a random quantity which is the sum of smaller, independent random phenomena. Shortly after publication, Large numbers of people rallied both to criticize and defend the book. Some critics denounced the book and its authors as supporting scientific racism. A number of books were written in response, to criticize the bell curve. Those books included a revised edition of evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould's The Mismeasure of Man, 
The Bell Curve Wars, a collection of essays reacting to Murray and Herrenstein's commentary, as well as the Bell Curve Debate, which contains essays that respond to the issues raised in the Bell Curve. Arthur S. Goldberger and Charles F. Mansky critique the empirical methods supporting the book's hypotheses. Citing assertions made by Murray in the Bell Curve, the Southern Poverty Law Center labeled Murray a white nationalist, charging that he has a long history of advocating discredited ideas that are rooted in eugenics. In 2000, Murray authored a policy study for AI on the same subject matter as the Bell Curve in which he wrote, Views, Views on Education. Murray has been critical of the No Child Left Behind law, arguing that it set a goal that was devoid of any contact with reality. The United States Congress, acting with large bipartisan majorities, at the urging of the president, enacted as the law of the land that all children are to be above average. He sees the law an example of educational romanticism, which asks too much from students at the bottom of the intellectual pile, asks the wrong things from those in the middle, and asks too little from those at the top. Challenging educational romanticism, he wrote Real Education, Four Simple Truths for Bringing America's Schools Back to Reality. His four simple truths are, ability varies. Half of the children are below average. Too many people are going to college. America's future depends on how we educate the academically gifted. Human group differences, Murray's views on human group differences have been the most controversial. In a paper published in 2005 titled, Where Are the Female Einsteins? Murray stated, among other things, no woman has been a significant original thinker in any of the world's great philosophical traditions. In the sciences, the most abstract field is mathematics, where the number of great female mathematicians is approximately two. In the other hard sciences, the contributions of great women have usually been empirical rather than theoretical, with leading cases in point being Henrietta Lavitt, Dorothy Hodgkin, Lise Mutner, Irene Joliot Curie and Marie Curie herself. Asked about this in 2014, he stated he could only recall one important female philosopher, a Euro and she was not a significant thinker in the estimation of historians of philosophy, adding so, yeah, I still stick with that. Until somebody gives me evidence to the contrary, he a Euro unregistered trademark LL stick with that statement a Euro Indiana, 2007, Murray wrote a back cover blurb for James R. Flynn's book What is Intelligence? This book is a gold mine of pointers to interesting work, much of which was new to me. All of us who wrestle with the extraordinarily difficult questions about intelligence that Flynn discusses are in his debt. In 2014, a speech that Murray was scheduled to give at Azusa Pacific University was postponed due to Murray's research on human group differences. Murray responded to the institution by pointing out that it was a disservice to the students and faculty to dismiss research because of its controversial nature rather than the evidence. Murray also urged the university to consider his works as they are and reach conclusions for themselves, rather than relying on sources that specialize in libeling people. Other Murray supports gay marriage. Other books, A Behavioral Study of Rural Modernization, Social and Economic Change in Thai Villages, Beyond Probation, Juvenile Corrections and the Chronic Delinquent a Euro co-authored with Louis A. Cox, Jr. Losing Ground, American Social Policy, 1950 a Euro 1980, Basic Books ISBN 0-465-04231-7. On Welfare Reform, In Pursuit, of Happiness and Good Government, Simon & Schuster ISBN 0-671-68743-3, Apollo, The Race to the Moon, with Catherine B. Cox, Simon & Schuster. ISBN 978-0-671-70625-8, What It Means to Be a Libertarian. Broadway Books ISBN 0-553-06928-4, IQ and Economic Success. Public Interest, 128, 21 a Euro 35. Income Inequality and IQ, AEI Press PDF Copy, The Underclass Revisited, AEI Press PDF Copy, Human Accomplishment, The Pursuit of Excellence in the Arts and Sciences, 800 BC to 1950. HarperCollins ISBN 0-06-019247-X. 
a quantification and ranking of well-known scientists and artists, in our hands, a plan to replace the welfare state, AEI Press ISBN 0-8447-4223-6 Real Education, Four Simple Truths for Bringing American Schools Back to Reality, Crown Forum ISBN 978-0-307-40538-8, Coming Apart, The State of White America, 1960-2010, Op-Ed Writings, Murray has published opinion pieces in The New Republic, Commentary, The Public Interest, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, National Review, and The Washington Post. He has been a witness before United States Congressional and Senate committees and a consultant to senior Republican government officials in the United States, and conservative officials in the United Kingdom, Eastern Europe, and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. In the April 2007 issue of Commentary magazine, Murray wrote on the disproportionate representation of Jews in the ranks of outstanding achievers and says that one of the reasons is that Jews have been found to have an unusually high mean intelligence as measured by IQ tests since the first Jewish samples were tested. His article concludes with the assertion, at this point, I take sanctuary in my remaining hypothesis, uniquely parsimonious and happily irrefutable. The Jews are God's chosen people. In the July-August 2007 issue of The American, a magazine published by the American Enterprise Institute, Murray says he has changed his mind about SAT tests and says it's time to scrap the test. Perhaps the SAT had made an important independent contribution to predicting college performance in earlier years, but by the time research was conducted in the last half of the 1990s, the test had already been ruined by political correctness. Murray advocates replacing the traditional SAT with the College Board Subject Achievement Tests. The surprising empirical reality is that the SAT is redundant if students are required to take achievement tests. See also, Historiometry, Intelligence Testing, Notes. External links, Quotations related to Charles Murray at Wyke Quote, Biography at American Enterprise Institute, The Age of Educational Romanticism. On requiring every child to be above average. The New Criterion, Vol. 26, May 2008. In depth interview with Murray, February 6, 2005. Book Notes interview with Murray on the Bell Curve, December 4, 1994. What's Wrong with Being the Best? 20 minute talk on elitism held in Sydney, Australia on August 13, 2007. An interview with Charles Murray on the Marketplace of Ideas. Europe Syndrome, The Trouble with Taking the Trouble Out of Everything article published March 24, 2009 in the Wall Street Journal based on a March 2009 lecture given by Charles Murray before members and guests of the American Enterprise Institute, Washington, D.C., Charles Murray, Dr. Honoris Causa from Unoversight ad Francisco Marokin, Real Education, Four Simple Truths to Bring America's Schools Back to Reality, What is Real Education? Brief interview with Louis Figueroa, interview with Charles Murray by Carly Sal Johnson, Welfare State and the Meaning of Life A 24-minute talk held in Slovakia on May 17, 2010, appearances on C-SPAN, Cato Institute Book Forum, one-hour lecture that Murray gave discussing his book Human Accomplishment, and some of the response to it. Address to Commonwealth Club of California on April 18, 2006 regarding his welfare reform proposals, 10 Questions for Charles Murray Macintosh, Matt, Gene Expression The Idea of Progress, Once Again, With Feeling in the Hoover Digest NY Times Biographical Article, Jason DePile, Daring Research or Social Science Pornography Charles Murray The Bell Curve Flattened by Nicholas Lemon, at Slate Magazine, Debunking the Bell Curve Articles on the Bell Curve